Phoropter, Wikipedia article audio. Phoropter is a common name for an ophthalmic testing device, also called a refractor. It is commonly used by eye care professionals during an eye examination, and contains different lenses used for refraction of the eye during sight testing, to measure an individual's refractive error and determine his or her eyeglass prescription. It also is used to measure the patient's phorias and ductions, which are characteristics of binocularity. Trademark and origin of the term Typically, the patient sits behind the phoropter, and looks through it at an eye chart placed at optical infinity, then at near for individuals needing reading glasses. The eye care professional then changes lenses and other settings while asking the patient for subjective feedback on which settings gave the best vision. Sometimes the habitual glasses RX or an automated refractor is used to provide initial settings for the phoropter, and sometimes a retinoscope is used through the phoropter to measure the vision without the patient having to speak, which is useful for babies and people who don't speak the language of the practitioner. Phoropters can also measure heterophorias, accommodative amplitudes, accommodative leads slash lags, accommodative posture, horizontal and vertical vergences, and more. History The major components of the phoropter are the battery of spherical and cylindrical lenses, auxiliary devices such as Maddox rods, filtered lenses, prisms, and the JCC used for astigmatism measurement. The prismatic lenses are used to analyze binocular vision and treat orthoptic problems. Shigan slash Wolf slash Genithalmic slash Shuron slash Brew From the measurements taken, the specialist will write an eyeglass prescription that contains at least three numerical specifications for each eye, sphere, cylinder, and axis, as well as pupillary distance. In 1909, Nathan Shigan of New York City invented a monocular optometer with a range of plus 0.25 to plus 6.00 diopters, consisting of a mechanism where a disc of low-powered lenses advanced a second disc of higher-power lenses automatically with each rotation, as in a modern phoropter. There is no evidence this was ever manufactured, but in 1915 he filed for a patent for a binocular version of this same optometer, and called it the ski optometer, so named for its usefulness in doing skioscopy. This was manufactured by WMF Rimold of Philadelphia. It included a Stevens ferrometer for measuring phorias, and a disc of auxiliary spherical lenses on the back, giving it a range of minus 12.00 to plus 12.00. To extend the range, there were clips on the front of each eye hole for the insertion of handheld sphere or cylinder trial lenses with the mechanism to rotate the axis with the thumb. It weighed 2 pounds 3 ounces. Around 1916 Michael Wolfe, also of New York City, bought him out and added his own invention, an innovative battery of cylinder lenses, ranging from minus 0.25 to minus 2.00, to the device, as well as Risley prisms for each eye. Maddox rods were optional. It weighed 3 pounds 13 ounces. Around 1924 the patents and rights were transferred to General Optical Company of Mount Vernon, New York, which had been making a much larger, heavier, and more solidly encased instrument, called the genithalmic refractor, since around 1920 using Wolf's 1917 patent number, and with a user's manual dated 1921. This instrument had a range of plus 17.75 to 22.50, and up to minus 3.75 cylinder, Maddox rods, Risley prisms, and a Stevens ferrometer. 
It weighed 7 pounds 5 ounces, and unlike all earlier devices of this kind, it hung from a horizontal mounting bar instead of being supported from the bottom. Like the Wolf, it had no Jackson cross cylinders at first, so a separate handheld one was required. Late models of the Genethalmic were fitted with JCCs. General Optical sold out to Chiron Optical of Geneva, New York in 1927, which sold the refractor until the late 1930s. A refined and improved version of the Genethalmic REFRator was manufactured in London starting around 1932, and sold in the UK by S.R. Stearman, S. Pulser and Son Limited, and others, as the British refracting unit. Also in 1909, Henry Dezeng got a patent for what looks remarkably like a modern phoropter, but the patent illustrations look nothing like the manufactured product, which was introduced around 1915 the Dezeng Phoroptometer Model 570. This was a device produced in Camden, New Jersey, which contained a battery of convex lenses for each eye a battery of concave lenses for each eye, and auxiliary lenses which gave it a total power range of plus 15.75 to minus 19.75, as well as a Maddox rod and Risley prism for each eye, and a Stevens ferrometer. There were no cylindrical lenses, so testing for astigmatism required the use of manual trial lenses for which there were rotating holders on the front of each eye hole, and there were stationary ones on the backs as well. Cross cylinders were optional, but they did not flip like a Jackson cross cylinder, they rotated in the same plane, so they were probably meant for the near point cross cylinder test for reading. It weighed 3 pounds 2 ounces. Around 1920 an improved model, Number 574, was introduced, reduced in size but with the same range. The forward rest was removed, and the rear trial lens clips were replaced with rubber eye guards. It weighed 2 pounds 12 ounces. In 1922, Dezeng replaced number 574 with number 584, and shortened the name to Phoropter. This device became so popular that its name became genericized, though often spelled Phoropter. The Phoropter was smaller and more precisely made than the 574, but with a similar power range, and the front clips for handheld trial lenses were removed and replaced with batteries of cylinder lenses ranging from minus 0.25 to minus 4.75. The Stevens ferrometer was dropped, and there were no Jackson cross cylinders. It weighed 2 pounds 8 ounces. In 1925, American Optical Co. bought Dezeng, and in 1927 introduced number 588, the A.O. Wellsworth Dezeng ferropter, which was slightly larger. The lenses were increased to 11 sixteenths inch and it weighed 3 pounds 2 ounces. This was the first in the Dezeng slash AO line to hang from a horizontal mounting bar, the earlier ones were supported from a bar below it. This phoropter was unique in that it was calibrated in 1 8 diopter steps throughout its whole range. In 1934, AO introduced number 589, the additive effective power ferropter, once again enlarged and improved. The lenses were increased to 3 fourths inch diameter, the permanent size, and the unit was much more massive, with a weight of 7 pounds 9 ounces, and with a range of plus 16.87 to minus 19.12 and minus 6.00 cylinder with auxiliary lenses to increase these to plus 18.87 slash 21.12 slash 8.00. All these models resembled the original Dezeng model in design, 
but number 590 of 1948 was a completely redesigned device, much larger and heavier, and more modern. It weighed 10 pounds 7 ounces. This was followed by another complete redesign in 1956, the RX Master, which became the prototype of all modern phoropters, and was updated to the Ultramatic RX Master in 1967, which is the current model. AO sold their phoropter division to Record in 1982, who still makes the Ultramatic. In the early 20th century, ophthalmologists A.S. Green, L.D. Green, and M.I. Green, of San Francisco, C.A., designed an optometer, which they developed slowly over many years. DRS Green teamed up with inventor Clyde L. Hunsaker of San Francisco, who applied for a patent on October 25, 1926. The title of their invention was simply an optometrist instrument, and the text described it as an optometer. Patent 1,804,690 was granted to the Greens and Hunsaker in 1931, and sold to Bosch and Lom, who had them redesign it. BNL trademarked it as Greens Refractor and introduced it in 1934. It was far more advanced than the competition in many ways. The power could be read right off the dial without having to do mental calculations, the range was far higher, from plus 19.75 to minus 28.00 and with cylinders up to minus 7.50, the battery of cylinders was much more intuitive and easy to use, and it was the first to have Jackson cross cylinders affixed. It weighed 13 pounds 1 ounce. The Green's refractor soon became the gold standard among eye care professionals. It helped put the wolf slash genithalmic slash Shuron line out of the market and forced AO to completely redesign their phoropter from scratch, not once, but twice. The Green's refractor remained unchanged for over four decades but sales slipped when AO introduced the Ultramatic RX Master with its revolutionary yoked JCC in 1967, and production of the Green's Refractor finally ended in the late 1970s. In 1978, BNL introduced the Green's II Refractor with yoked JCC, but due to patent dispute lost it to AO, who discontinued it. As for the original Green's refractor, in spite of the fact that production stopped decades ago, many are still being used today, as they are virtually indestructible, and have a devoted rank of optometrists who swear by them.